The opening scene features a US movie director named Eric, who arrives in Cyprus in order to film a documentary. He goes to the famous Hotel Gula, which appears to have a tragic history. Eric is accompanied by his wife, Sophia, who is born and brought up in Cyprus. The couple is received at the airport by a tour guide named Anna, who briefs them about the place. She claims that there are plenty of materials which Eric can work on, such as sea serpents, mermaids, myths and legends of ancient gods, as well as ghosts. She also reveals that Hotel Gula has been abandoned for almost two decades, and the locals are terrified to go near it, as they believe that it is cursed. However, the hotel is now purchased by a wealthy couple named Frank and Rosemary, and is currently in the process of renovation. Upon arrival, Eric meets with his crew members, a videographer named Jennifer, and a sound tech, Christine. While exploring the hotel, a bag of cement mysteriously falls from the top, nearly crushing the crew members. They look up, but find nothing amiss. As a result, they dismiss it, thinking that it happened by mistake. Or Bugs Bunny's just being a little bitch up there again. In the meantime, Sophia's attention is grabbed by an ancient picture depicting violence. That's nothing she hasn't already seen working in the film industry. A short while later, she is approached by her father, Bruce, who will be working with them as the host of the show. The two are overjoyed to see each other after a long time. Later on, Eric and the crew members have a conversation with the hotel owners, who inform them about the hotel's history. According to the couple, it was New Year's Day, 1990, and the 53rd Monday of the year, something that rarely happens. There was a party, and everything went well, but the food was poisoned, due to which every single guest died. This resulted in a big scandal and a high-level investigation, but nothing ever came out of it. Out of agony, the owners of the hotel committed the unthinkable. Since then, the locals consider the place to be haunted. Despite the horrific history, they decided to buy the hotel, as they believe it to be a good investment, and there are no paranormal activities recorded. Hearing this, Bruce suggests that they try something new by creating their own ghost for the show. Eric doesn't like the idea at all, but the old man is confident that the audience will love it. The lowest common denominator just loves being lied to. Following this, Eric and Sophia head to their rooms on the fifth floor to get some rest. Just before entering the room, he is startled by a sudden appearance of two female concierges who stare at him in a creepy way. During the nighttime, we also see a young girl walking along the corridor of the hotel. Shortly after, Eric hears a sound outside and gets out of the bed to check, but it only turns out to be his wife walking in her sleep. He hurriedly runs towards her and grabs her just before she jumps off the balcony. Sophia then snaps back to her consciousness and returns to her room. Maybe take a bedroom on the first floor. The next day, Eric and Sophia have a meeting with the show's producers, Dom and Pat, who seem excited for the shoot. After a brief discussion about the show, the couple heads back to the hotel. On their way, Eric apologizes for past mistakes, expressing his regret for prioritizing work over their relationship. It turns out that the two had lost a baby in the past, and since then, Sophia has been feeling depressed. However, she assures him that she is fine now, and tells him not to worry. Later that night, Eric is working on his computer when he is approached by Anna. She hands him a master key that can activate all doors and elevators in the hotel. She also hands him a file detailing the history of the place, mentioning its association with Teshub, a weather god. Anna explains that locals used to worship Teshub and sacrifice human bodies to appease her. According to her, Teshub averted a world-ending catastrophe by defeating his own serpent pet. Meanwhile, Bruce comes to Sophia to inquire about her state of mind. She confides in him about her uneasy feelings regarding the place, as she always senses someone spying on her. In addition, she also thinks that there is something off with the hotel owners, as they are always wandering around the place in a creepy manner. Despite her reservations, Bruce assures her that everything is fine and that there is nothing to worry about. Afterwards, the crew initiates their work, opting for a new horror theme as suggested by Bruce. For this, they dim the lights and transform one of the hotel employees into a ghost. Bruce then addresses the audience and declares the exploration of the haunted hotel. He leads them to the staged ghost and feigns fear. Once the recording concludes, all crew members, including the producers, seem to be satisfied with the content, prompting them to proceed with a second take. I don't think that's how that works, but okay. At the same time, Sophia 
is suddenly flooded with memories of the tragic day in 1990 when she witnessed the guests succumbing to food poisoning one after another. This makes her feel very uneasy, causing her to collapse to the ground. She regains her consciousness after a while, but she still appears to be mentally disturbed. The hotel owners, seemingly unperturbed, offer her an unfamiliar liquid, asserting that it will help her calm the nerves. Eric is suspicious because of its bad odor, but they claim it to be a herbal drink. Following this, Eric takes her to the room for some rest, but she is continuously haunted by several nightmares. She then confides in him about how she can feel an evil presence around her. However, Eric brushes off her concerns, saying the place is perfectly safe. And it's going to make us a lot of money, so shut up, babe. On the other hand, Anna is showering in her room when an unknown masked pervert in black sneaks in. Hearing a noise, she walks out to investigate, but the man hides in her closet. After getting dressed, she heads to Eric's study table to review the script for their next shoot. There, she gets alarmed to find a list of the victims of the tragedy and hastily texts Eric. When the latter does not respond, she rushes toward his room to discuss the matter. However, the masked man intercepts her on the way and drags her to an elevator. He then pulls out a knife and stabs her multiple times, resulting in her death. After this, he drags her body out of the elevator and takes it to the basement. In the meantime, Jennifer and Christine are at the hotel lounge, reviewing the footage from the earlier shoot. During this, they hear an unusual sound, sparking both curiosity and confusion in them. The two then decide to investigate its source, despite being in the middle of the night. Armed with flashlights, a camera, and a microphone, they venture into the dark basement via the elevator. As they progress, the mysterious sound grows louder and louder. At one point of their exploration, they are startled when the objects around them start to fall inexplicably. Sensing an eerie presence, the two hastily retreat to the elevator. Jennifer gets inside, but the elevator door automatically closes, leaving Christine behind. In a desperate bid to save herself, Christine hides herself behind a hot pipe, accidentally burning her own face. Oh shit! Not long after, a ghostly figure materializes behind her, which scares her out. In a state of panic, she runs away, only to fall into an underground water tank. She is even more terrified when she finds the dead body of Anna floating in it. Before she can comprehend the situation, a hand emerges from the water and pulls her down, ultimately leading to her drowning. Sometime later, Eric is awakened by his phone's vibration, and he finds Anna's message summoning him to the lobby urgently. He then heads towards the lobby, but comes across Bruce instead. The two look for Anna, but do not find her anywhere. Perplexed, Eric returns back to his wife, and moments later, he receives a call from Jennifer, who frantically explains what happened. Sensing the urgency of the situation, he leaves, promising Sophia that he will be back soon. Shortly after his departure, Dom and Pat break into the room, seemingly with some ill intentions. Seeing them, Sophia runs out of the room, only to find the same two concierges with knives in their hands. This sets her in panic, so she races towards the elevator. However, her escape is cut short, and she gets apprehended by the hotel owners. On the other side, Eric, Jennifer, and Bruce venture into the basement in search of Christine. Shortly after, Frank appears out of nowhere, so Bruce decides to stay with him and have a drink together. Eric and Jennifer then continue with their quest until they stumble upon a peculiar wall using an axe. They break through and uncover a hidden old tunnel on the other side. The duo begins to explore the area, and soon a shocking revelation unfolds. An old photograph from the year 1880 featuring Frank and Rosemary. This discovery prompts them to realize that the hotel owners are not real. Believing that Bruce is now in danger, they rush to his aid. Reaching the previous location, they find only a cell phone, which Eric identifies as Sophia's. But before they can make sense of the situation, Eric is dragged away by a group of masked men, while Jennifer is attacked by Pat. Amidst the struggle, Eric somehow manages to grab a spiked coil and uses it as a weapon to take down these men. Simultaneously, Pat is on the verge of killing Jennifer, but Eric shows up just in time and chokes him from behind. Right then, the two concierges appear, prompting Eric and Jennifer to run for their lives. Escaping through a secret underground passage, they come across the hotel owners, who have inexplicably grown very old. Eric inquires about Sophia and Christine, but Frank responds with an ominous smile. Just then, the concierge arrives, forcing them to continue with their escape. A short while later, the two lock themselves inside a storeroom, unaware of the fact that Dom is already inside. He stabs both of them with his knife, getting them to the ground as he prepares to finish Eric off. Jennifer somehow manages to get up and stab Dom from behind. She then tragically succumbs to her injury, leaving Eric alone in this rescue mission. Despite his injuries, Eric persists 
in his search and eventually locates Sophia lying unconscious on the ground. He tries to wake her up, but at the same time, a ghostly figure launches a sudden attack on him. Regardless, he manages to fight back and stab the figure with a pointed rod, wounding it severely. Here, it is finally disclosed that the ghost is none other than Teshub, a mermaid. I, f I knew it. Eric perceives it as a threat and proceeds to finish it off, but Bruce stops him from doing so. He warns that the death of Teshub will result in the death of the sun and ultimate destruction of the world. Despite the warning, Eric chooses to take the risk. <laughs> That's a, that a boy, Eric. And stabs the mermaid to death. Upon witnessing this, Bruce becomes deeply disturbed, so he pulls out a knife and commits the unthinkable. Bruce was as gullible as his audience. In the aftermath of this event, Eric carries his unconscious wife out of the hotel and brings her to the beach as he attempts to wake her. Sophia's eyes suddenly widen, revealing that she is now possessed by a supernatural force. She stares at the sun, which slowly turns black, indicating the end of the world. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.